I, I still, I'm still alive. I, I just want to thank you right now. I, I know things not is that I want them to be. I want to thank you right now. I, I've got to learn how to thank you. I got to learn how to thank you in everything, not for everything. God, I want to thank you. It is not like I want it, but it is still well. I want to thank you right now, God. I just want to thank you. You've been too good and you've been too kind. I want to thank you right now. I'm just gonna thank you, God, that you are still God in the midst of my storm. Yeah. You are God before my storm, and you're still God right now. And I'm going to come through this storm. This storm will not last always. It came to pass. And I'm going to praise you right now. I'm going to thank you right now. Because this storm won't be here always. I'm going to learn how to thank the Lord Amen. in the storm. Yes. That's my reaction. My reaction right now, I'm praising in the midst of the storm. It's not like in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. No, no, I'm going to say thank you in the midst of a storm. But not only am I going to thank you, watch this now, I'm going to trust you. Yes. God, I'm going to trust you. I've seen you deliver too many times. I've seen you move too many times. I've seen you heal too many times. I've seen you work it out too many times. I'm just going to trust you right now. I'm going to trust you right now. If the three Hebrew boys could trust you in the fire of furnace, if Jonah could trust you in the belly of a fish, I'm going to trust you right now. That's how I praise in the midst of a storm. Do what, first of all? Then I do what? Watch this right now. But I got to also know in the midst of my storm, I got some triumph. <laughs> I got, I, I'm going to come out better. I'm going to come out bigger. I'm going to come out more blessed on the other side. I'm going to go through this valley. I'm not going to set up in the valley. I'm going through. But my triumph, please write that. If you don't hear that, please write that again. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, now thanks to verse 2, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God. Who what? Always causes us to triumph. And do I have some folk in here who always triumph? I said, do I have anybody in the house today who always triumph in Christ Jesus? So in the midst of my storm, don't see any way out. Going to learn to thank Him. I'm just going to thank you, God. I want to thank you right now. I may have been on a ship and I just may be on a piece of a board. I want to thank you for the piece of a board. In the midst of it all, God, I'm going to trust you. You brought me this far. And I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me. You didn't bring me up to now and just touch your hand. I'll take your hand off. And I thank you you're with me from the cradle. I thank you with me right now. I just want to right now still trust you. But I also want to know and recognize I got triumph in the midst of my storm. Can somebody please give God a hand have a praise that in the name of Jesus? Right? I got you out here. So, so we talked about, so the first thing that we have here is this idea we talked about. We, first of all, we talked about this idea uh, the first one was what was our first P? Prayer. Prayer. Second P was what? Reparation. Third P was what? Praise. Praise. Here's our last P. I'm going to give you the day and then we'll pick up another piece next time. How is our life of positioning? Hmm. How is our life of positioning? How many of us already agree the blessings and abundance are already available? I see how the blessings are. Are the blessings and overflow already available? Yes. I see how the blessings and overflow and everything you're looking for already available? Yes. If I'm out of position to receive it, it doesn't mean they're not there. Amen, somebody. Amen. If I'm out of position to receive it, doesn't mean it's not there. If the blessings and the overflow and abundance are there, and I'm not receiving it, it means I may just be out of position to receive it. Uh, uh, other night we were here at the church and somebody came and knocked on this door, right this door right here on, during the day. Well, we're all back in the session hall. That person just kept on knocking. We couldn't hear because we were out of position to hear what was there. Well, here's what I'm offering. Too many believers are out of position. Let me make this real for you. I just appreciate this praise report. That they, first of all, I want you all to give God just a hand clap of praise for Sister Lisa Edwards. She's just a wonderful example of what it means to stand in the midst of the storm. Now, let me just tell you what time we can give a hand clap of praise. Now, all y'all look at her hair right now. Doesn't she have some pretty hair? I said, Doesn't she have some pretty hair? This is her hair. She didn't buy it. It didn't come from Korea. It's hers. What you all didn't know, she's been sharing with us about testimony that she had some, some systems, some challenges with the hair. And it was falling out and everything. But she trusted God and believed God and stood on his word and got positioned and now have a hair full of hair that's fuller than it's ever been before. Why? Because she did not stay out of position. She got in position to receive what God has promised. I know somebody ought to give God a hand clap of faith in Jesus. So what I'm saying is, God is no respecter of person. 
It, it, right now, if Uncle Ron and I want to go some more hair, we're just going to believe God for some more hair. The idea for God is not a respect of a person. However, i got to make sure I'm positioned to receive what God has for me. Don't you think God doesn't love you? Don't you think God is mad at you? Don't you think God has turned his back on you? Maybe if you've not gotten what God promised you, just out of position. So the idea was, what must we do to get back in position? We examine our life of prayer, examine our life of preparation, and examine our life of praise. Now, I love this part, I get for positioning. Please read this video, right? Please read this. What does it say? Positioning yourself. Keep going. To receive all that God has for your life. See, God already has provided it. I just got to receive it by being positioned. Come on, somebody. I say, God has already provided it. I just got to receive it by being positioned. I say, God has already provided it. I got to receive it by being positioned. Keep on going here. Now, I, now, I love this one. I, now, if he, if, right, I need you to write this. Say it and then write this one down because we're going to talk about this all month. Let's just say it first of all. Position yourself to allow God to position himself in your life. Mm. I got to be positioned so God can position himself in my life. In other words, who is on the throne of your life? For some folk, it's the job. For some folk, it's people. For some folk, it's money. Who is sitting on the throne of your life? Because when I get positioned in God, he can have the right position in my life. He has to be first. He has to be first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things be added unto you. It's not putting God 15th and 30th. It's saying at this point, when I position myself, when I position myself in God, I allow him to position himself fully in me. Glory to God. So we're going to keep on talking about in this last one right here. Here's the a, here's a point right here. Think, read this. What is it? What? What? So, so, so how many are not where you want to be right now? Amen. Get ready for your transition. If, if, you're not, if you're not thrilled with how things are, get positioned for your transition. See, transition says, I, I was here, but now I'm over here. I have transitioned from here, from not having enough to having more than enough. There has to be a, how is your life a position? Are you positioned to receive all God's name to build? Jesus shed his blood on the cross. For us to have life and enjoy life to the full and the overflow. Now, I always make sure we are positioned to receive. Can somebody give God one more hand of praise in Jesus' name? One more hand of praise. So I just want to remind us about a few things before we make a couple of points here because we've read John 10.10 10 already. 2018. 2018. If you recall, before we began this year, 20 means great expectancy and sufficiency. 18 talking, it comes, comes from biblical numerology, meaning life. So 2018 says what? Read that with me, it's what? Great, Great expectancy for abundant day. So every day in this year, yes. there ought to be some great expectancy yes. for some abundant living. I expect tomorrow to be better than today because I got great expectancy for abundant living. And by the next time, by the time I see you this week, I expect even more because I got great expectancy for abundant living. Too many believers have already concluded it's not going to get better. And just accept what comes in. No, we got to start raising out. We got to start thinking bigger and start dreaming bigger and start talking bigger and start praying bigger because we have great expectancy for abundant living. So, so what's, our, what's our thing that they right here is what? Extraordinary living thing. In 2018. So what I want you to do right now is go. Now this is our mission statement for today, for this week, for this month. Read this with me, please. What I what operate in a spirit of acceptance. Keep going, please. I am open and ready to attract a button. If you really believe that, please join me in giving God one more hand. Now here's the point. This is our mission statement based on John 10:10. 10, 10. It is to do what we are embracing and enjoying. How many of you just really start embracing and enjoying life again? I mean, how many of you really ready to embrace it? I mean, I'm, don't be clapping you not. But if you're really ready to embrace and enjoy life, please give God one more hand clap of praise and just say, ready to embrace and enjoy life. And here's the point. John 10, 10, the entire chapter deals with the fact of people trying to go in and look for counterfeit measures to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. the, whole, the, the whole context 
And we'll see this in the, today and on Tuesday, is the fact that it, it, it calls, in other words, it's saying that people are desiring to embrace him in your life. But they are looking to do that in ways apart from God. And so what Jesus calls it, Jesus calls them thieves and robbers. Folks that are taking away your joy. They may, it, it, it looks good, smells good, got a fresh face, but it's not good for you. Now again, it's called them thieves. And so that's why he says in John 10, 10, the thief who wants to promise you an enjoyable life and have you embrace life. That thief is selling you on a counterfeit. I am the only one, Jesus is saying, yeah. that can make sure you enjoy yeah. and embrace life. So what are we saying right here? So what Jesus is really saying is that I got you, I got to have you as believers discern between what's real and what's fake. Yes. Now, 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 now here's what happened. Go, go walk around here sometime. Now, now, not in here, but you go walk around and, and on your job. Look at, the, at that Gucci purse and see if it's really real. That, and then there's a difference between a fake and real. And the people that see come get a church. Now the, 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 the and what Jesus said is that the devil is trying to sell you on fake Christianity. Mm -hmm. Trying to sell you on fake love. Trying to sell you on a promise that's going to enter to your demise because he only comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. So what happens? This is about fake and real. Well, we know what it's like because many of us are dealing with folk like this. You got some real folk in your life. And you got some fake folk in your life. Amen, somebody. What our real folk look and is our real. So our genuine people will express their opinion openly. In fact, we got some folk right now that as soon as they get through hugging us on our job, we'll start talking as well. So the idea was we got to discern between genuine and fake. Not just people. But then what's the thing? It's nothing but God does. God makes sure he steals us. God reassures the glory to God. God enlightens us. But what does the devil do? What does get, this, read this different. What, this is what the devil does. The devil does what? What does what? Frighten you. The boogeyman. The devil does what? Pushes you. The devil does what? This is a fact. I, I, I had a, a, a text message from someone I've known for years about a job opportunity and said, this, I, I'm content where I am. And God is confusing me by this job. I'm like, oh Lord. So you know we have God. So, so, so the, the God, according to, to Philippians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, is not the author of confusion. If confusion is there, God is not. Let's keep on going. The devil does what also? Condemns. God will never condemn you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yeah, you got to get in your spirit. God will never say that with me. God. Will never, never condemn me. Condemn. Now what are we saying? Well, how can I prove that? Romans 8 1 says, There is there therefore no condemnation yes. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. If you see a condemned building, what are they about to do? Yes. Tear down. God said, No, no, I'm not going to tear you down. I'm going to build you up. I got some work for you to do. I got some work for you to go. I got places for you to go. I'm not going to tear you down. I'm going to build you up. And the devil also does as well. So here's the point. Believers, we got to decide. If we're going to keep going down this fake road of fake Christianity and fake belief, now here's the point. Church folk know church talk. <laughs> How's everything going? Oh, hallelujah, everything's like this, right? That is, at some point, we got to be able to discern between what's fake and what's genuine. Now, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? So Jesus is saying that the devil is trying to tell you if you follow his path, you'll never be happy. Jesus says the only way you're going to be happy and enjoy and embrace life is to follow me because I am the way. I am the truth. And I am like, apart from me, you can't get to the Father. So that I, so as believers, we got to be, so his, we got to be clear about whether or not our prayers are fake or genuine. Whether or not our praise fake or genuine. Our preparation fake or genuine. And our positioning Faith or genuine. So what do we have here? So embracing and enjoying life. So this idea of abundance. Please write this. I'm going to give you this uh, two, uh, one A and one B for today so we can write this down as well. If you turn, you don't have to turn over there. Let me go back and talk about what it means right here from our time here. John chapter 1, chapter 10. If you just write this verse down here. John chapter 10, verse 9. I'll give you one A and give you one B. And we'll pick up the other A's and B's on Tuesday Bible study. 
John 10, 9, Jesus says, anyone who enters in through me 